This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, well, he's made it perfectly clear. He stands to ask this, so it won't take you a minute. Can you look at example five, please? Yanis currently has a portfolio of shares giving 18% with a risk of 10. He's considering investing in one of the following additional investments. So again, he is adding it to his existing, but here is a choice. He either will take A, which will give a return of 8, or B, a return of 8. So in terms of return, he's indifferent which he picks. You would agree? Uh, however, they've got different levels of risk. They've got different coefficients of correlation. Note that A is minus 0.7, so be careful in the formula. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The new investment will be 20%. And hello, hello, hello. Then we don't argue afterwards. Can you assume he's got to take one of them, but I want to know which one would he prefer? Okay? Which of the two will he choose? I think if you're going on return, he doesn't care. It's whichever ends up giving him the least total risk. Okay? Correct. Be careful with the, uh, it's a silly point, but be careful with the, um, the last term in this. Remember it's plus, but if the coefficient of correlation is negative, all of this becomes minus. But otherwise, we're all happy? So as I said before, I mean, as long as you're happy what terms go in the form, it's just speed on your calculator. 
But the final conclusion here, surely, uh, I said, I said, do assume you have to pick one of them. Well, since both of them are giving the same return, you didn't really need, but the new return in either case, the overall return will be 16%. But that's the same in both, we knew that. So the decision's purely based on risk. And I hope I've said enough for you to accept it could have been either that's better. But in this particular one, the better of the two is A. If you've got the same return with less risk, it has to be preferable. All right? And the whole world's falling apart. Uh, but you do all agree, it has to be A. And, I mean, you can see what's happened, all right. A on its own is more risky. But I hope it more than makes sense. If you were choosing investments, you don't simply say which investment is the more or less risky business. You always would consider how does it fit with your existing investments. And here, although A on its own is more risky, because it fits better... It ended up, uh, it was the one that ended up giving us the lower risk. All right? So I still hope, I, I hope you'd agree, relatively easy arithmetic. And so far, a relatively easy story. Yeah? But I hope I've said enough there. Now again, I should never say this, but I honestly don't think that's hard. I don't think you do, especially when you've done one or two. But just to prove to you, could you turn, I'm not going to give you time to do this, please, because we've got to do, but could you turn to page 155? 155. And although I'm sorry, we're not going to do it here, you can do it at home, but just to show you how it was asked. Uh, if you just look at question 5 for a minute, Ella, this was a real exam question. And, when I said at the beginning, you know, there was a new examiner for three exams, it was awful. We've got to ignore him because of what the new one said. This was a question set by the one before. The new examiner said he's going to be like him. This was an exam question, it was in the choice section, section B, and it almost certainly only would be. But just look. They wish to buy a million dollar shares in each of two companies from a choice of three. So they're going to buy any two of these three companies. And those three companies, they're X, Y, Z. For each of them, we told the return and we told the standard deviation. We're going to pick any two of them. Uh, and it's giving, giving you the coefficient of correlation between each two, if you understand me. And so all he's asking you to do, he says which is the most efficient, he says which is the best portfolio, which pair, you're clear here. But surely three times you're going to have to work out, if we put X and Y together, what will be the average return? And note, you're buying a million shares in each of two, so it's half in each. So I think you can see at a glance... If you did X and Y, your return would be halfway between 11 and 20. What would the risk be? Well, you know the two standard deviations. It's half in each. You know the coefficient of correlation. You could work out the risk. All right? You're having to do that three times. Well, I'm sorry. We're not going to do that here. I've done one. You've done two. Yeah? Hello? You have to do it three times. Well, I think always a bit silly. If you can do it once, you can do it three times. If you can't do it once, you can't do any of them. But you have to do it three times. He says, which is the best? Ah, the one bit here relates to what I was saying. That because they all give different returns, each set will give a different return if you understand me. So you'll end up with three choices. Um, you know, X and Y, maybe they give 12% with a risk of 4. Maybe another pair give 15% with a risk of 5 or something. Well, 
the main marks were for doing the calculation. If he says which is best, I think you'll find that one set of the three you can automatically ignore. Do you remember that one before break? When if they gave the same return, the risk was dip, yeah? I think you'll find that one of them you definitely wouldn't do. The other two, you can't decide which is best. You'll find that one has more risk and gives a higher return. And you'd write down, it depends on their attitude to risk. Okay? Part B was a bit of written, relates to what's coming. But most of the marks were for just doing that three times. You know, and then proving you understood. Well, I think that's quite, I really do think that's nice. It would almost certainly be section B. Well, definitely section B. But if you've got one of those in section B, whatever else is coming, I really think that would be one to go for. All right? One final thing to do with numbers, though. <coughs> it's very difficult for me here. The new examiner, he said what he said and I've told you. But, until he said a few questions, oh, what am I getting? The point is, the examiner he says he's going to be like, did have the habit of keep throwing the odd thing in that needed a formula, which wasn't in the egg, on the sheet. You know, one example was, for that formula, you need standard deviation. If I'd given you the variance, well, you'd have needed to know that it's the square root. All right? Now, in some ways, that's slightly unfair. And we've yet to find out if the new examiner is going to do that sort of thing or not. I'm going to have to assume he might. And one thing the old examiner did was this. Are you still on page 157? Sorry, page 157. Oh, sorry, it wasn't 157. <laughs> Sorry, page 155, page 155. That question 5, Ella, please try and have a go tonight, because then, you know, obviously tomorrow you can ask me if there's a problem, but I really think you'll have no problem at all. It's identical to what you've just done, but you're doing it three times. But another old one was number 4. Now, there are some written bits there we haven't done yet, but the main arithmetic... Again, he gave you three investments, alpha, beta, gamma. You were going to take any two of them. So, exactly the same idea. Uh, and so, you would work out the return from each pair and the standard deviation. Well, for the formula, you need the coefficient of correlation. But in that one... He gave you something called the covariance. Now, I think, I really think this is slightly unfair, but I say I've got to assume the new one might do the same. Um, and so, it's just possible there's one more formula you might need, which is not given. Now, this is going to be frustrating, maybe, for some of you. I hate formulae coming from nowhere. And if it does frustrate you, ask me. I'll happily show you how it's calculated and things. But you'll have to sit with me at five o'clock, yeah? Because you can't actually calculate. But when they're calculating the coefficient of correlation, look at page 34. Page 34. Sorry, back to the notes. Back to the notes. I beg your pardon. I've already said you can never be asked to actually calculate standard deviation or calculate coefficient of correlation. But when they are calculating it, it's worked out a little bit like the variance. We look at differences from averages and things. Uh, and there's that formula at the bottom. It's the covariance divided by the two standard deviations. All right? Now, I say again, it always annoys me just quoting something blind and saying, learn it. I found that terribly frustrating. It's an easy one to use. 
to spend time in class showing you what covariance is and things honestly would be wasting your time. If it frustrates you, by all means sit with me. It won't take long, and I'll show you where it comes from, but only out of interest. Okay? But the point is this, you see, without making you turn back, if I told you two investments, X and Y, if I told you the standard deviations were 8% and 10%, for the formula, you need the coefficient of correlation. Well, if instead, like that one you just looked quickly at, if I told you the covariance was... Bleh, bleh, 56. Well, the coefficient of correlation, which is what we need, it's the covariance divided by the two standard deviations. It would be plus 0.7. Alright? So it's very easy to use. Very easy to use. And don't be angry with me. I'm sorry, just producing it from nowhere. Uh, I say, I think it's slightly... Oh, even though it's an easy formula, I think it's slightly unfair to expect you to know formulae that aren't on the formula sheet and so on. But we've got to assume he might do it. So I said, uh, I would give you several formulae today. If you want to be safe, I would learn. Uh, on the revision, I'll give you a checklist of formulae, you know, which ones you must learn and which ones are on the sheet. I'm not giving you the checklist today, but that formula, sorry, just one second, that formula is not on the formula sheet. If he is like the old one, he just could expect you to use it. Yes? But this uh, covariance can be negative. Right? Oh, it can, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I'll tell you, I said I'm not going to go through it, but what it is, you remember the ice cream business, yeah? Where you had 10, 15, 20, um, 20, 15, 10, yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, if I wanted to know the coefficient of correlation, the covariance divided by standard deviations, uh, what they do is they work out the average for each of them. The average for this one is 15, for that one is 15. It could have been different, obviously. You look at the differences, so if that's A and that's B, the difference for A, 10 is minus 5 from its average, 0 plus 5. You with me? Uh, you do the same for B. Remember, B could have had a different average. Here it's 15, so B is plus 5, 0, minus 5. All you do for the covariance, which is looking how they fit together, is you multiply those two together and multiply by the probabilities. And add up, yeah? So you remember the variance was just for one of them. You squared and took the average. Here, you multiply the two together and take the average. So, it's answering your question, Natalia. 5 times 5, here it's minus 25, yeah? But times a third, because the probability is a third. Here it's 0, here it's minus 25. Sorry, times a third, the probability. Well, of course, the answer is going to be negative. Yeah? And in fact, if you wanted to, I'm not going to waste your time looking back. But in fact, that's going to come to um, minus 8.33 or something. You would find, we already knew the two standard deviations. Yeah? Do you remember? We'd worked it out earlier, the ice cream umbrellas. Yeah. yeah. If you did finish that off and divide by the two standard deviations, you'll actually get minus 1 here. It is perfect correlation. So, I did more than I intended there, but still... Uh, but the covariance, that's how it's calculated. But yeah, it can be positive or negative. And that's why the coefficient of correlation may be positive, may be negative. Okay?